Here in a peaceful enclave of St. George, a tiny studio with a big mission. Annalee Davis runs a nonprofit contemporary art organization called Fresh Milk, set on her family's dairy farm, a former sugar plantation. I see Fresh Milk as an intervention into this historical site that's very loaded with a history of indentureship and enslavement. And I feel that being a nurturing art space goes against the grain of history of activities that would have formerly taken place here. Davis, a multidisciplinary artist, teaches at Barbados Community College, the only institution on the island to offer a fine arts degree. In 2011, I had a particularly strong group of students and realized at that time that almost 100% of our students within a year of graduating stopped making work. And the reason for that is because there isn't enough of a reception for their contemporary practice on the island. We don't have a national art gallery. We don't have a contemporary art museum. Fresh Milk changed that, creating meeting, lecture, and workspace as well as residency programs, both local and abroad. Artists Simone Asia and Versha Harris. There was barely any kind of structure or organization outside of school that was supportive. And for me, Fresh Milk was that place you had a space, you had the energy around you. When you're on your own, you're on your own, you have no one. Their talent is obvious. I deal with creating characters and their mundane experiences versus their fantasies. And I scan the drawings and then I put them into Photoshop and I create the animation in there. The use of detail was always something that I always wanted to do or I like to do. And me being a very obsessive person as well, that kind of does reflect on my character. Fresh Milk's reputation is growing well beyond Barbados, helping to erase stereotypical notions of what art is in the Caribbean. Fresh Milk is a space of possibility. It's trying to shape a community around contemporary art practice and critical thinking. Sugar basically laid the groundwork for everything that we have in Barbados. After settling Barbados in 1627, the British deforested the island within decades, blanketing it with sugar plantations. Dutch settlers helped the British build windmills to help power their operations. These mills, there was once 508 of them across the island, took advantage of the trade winds that are coming from the east. Morgan Lewis was the last operating mill on the island. They shoot the sugarcane stalks down here. Lennox Honeychurch grew up in Barbados and is an Oxford-trained historian and artist. He's also the executive director of the Barbados National Trust, which maintains and protects historic sites, including the Morgan Lewis Windmill. You needed large-scale labor for sugar. This commerce was so important to Britain that everybody was taking investment into it. Barbados was one of the world's largest producers of sugar its industry sustained by slavery. You had enslaved people that were being brought from a wide area of West Africa, from today what is Senegal all the way down to Angola. Over 200 years, nearly 400,000 slaves were shipped to Barbados. Freedom was granted in 1838, but conditions remained dire. A labor rebellion in 1937 finally forced the British to improve the quality of life. So from 1930s and into the 50s, there was this, you could say, a peaceful revolution that opened up Barbados. And then in 1966, Britain granted Barbados political independence. Today, says Honey Church, Barbados has come to terms with its history. It's been 300 years of really a terrible legacy, and it has taken maturity, give and take, time to level everything out. But today, one could say safely, Barbadians understand all of this and are keen and proud to explain their island to the visitor. The government in Barbados is slowly relaunching the sugar industry on a smaller scale. That is Chronicle for tonight. We hope you enjoyed this brief escape. On behalf of all of us at Chronicle, we hope you and yours are staying safe and healthy. I'm Shana Seymour. Good night.